So in case you missed it, Threadripper from AMD has another CPU added to the lineup as of one day ago. So let's go over that processor and see just what it offers to the high-end desktop platform that AMD is developing with the TR4 socket. you're completely unfamiliar with the AMD lineup right now as it sits they have two current generation lines of CPUs one is currently out and that would be the R3 R5 and R7 processors and then the upcoming Threadripper is their other lineup which is based on the X399 chipset and the TR4 socket as opposed to the AM4 socket which supports the R3 R5s and R7s now although the Threadripper processors that are upcoming and the currently existing R7s are fives and r3s are based on the same core architecture because they have different physical sockets they are not compatible between uh, processors and motherboards so you can't take an 1800x for example and put it in a tr4 motherboard now until last night we knew of the threadripper 1950x which is the monstrous 16 core and 32 thread processor and we also knew about the 1920x which is a 12 core and 24 thread processor however last night amd also announced announced a third processor to the Threadripper lineup, and that is the 1900X, which is eight cores and 16 threads. So hold up, you're telling me that AMD is releasing an eight core, 16 thread processor on a new high-end desktop platform, even though they already have an eight core, 16 thread processor, they actually have three of them, on the AM4 mainstream platform. So that sounds a little bit like Intel with their uh, X299 platform and their Z270 platform with bringing the i5s and i7s from the Z270 to the X299 platform and really doing nothing more than taking out integrated graphics. And there's where the difference between AMD doing something very similar like this and uh, Intel doing this with their Z270 to X299 platform. Now hopping over to a couple of web pages on the left side we have an Antec uh, supplying us with a, a chart of the Intel Core X series and on the right side we have PC Gamer doing the same for the current Ryzen lineup. On the left side here the uh, Core X series at the very bottom of that chart we see the Core i5 7640X and the Core i7 7740X. Now the big complaint with these two processors is that they were basically the 7600K and the 7700K just taken from the Z270 platform and put on to the uh, X299 platform which does use a different socket so those uh, 7600K and 7700K would not have otherwise been compatible with the X299 platform. Now aside from a platform change, the only major difference between these uh, Core X series processors and their Z270 counterparts is that the Core X series processors do not have integrated graphics at all, meaning you absolutely have to pair it with a discrete graphics card if you want any kind of video output. Now if we move to the right side here and compare the 1800X to the 1900X, both of which are near the top of the chart but not the complete top of the chart, just going across here we see that they are both 8 core 16 thread parts. Uh, the base clocks are 200 megahertz apart, their turbo clocks are the same, their XFR clocks are the same, they have the exact same amount of L3 cache, neither one of them comes with a cooler. You will note that the 1900X has a significantly higher TDP and a uh, little bit higher of a price point as well. Now, given only this information, you'd be forgiven for believing that AMD is making the same Intel mistake that Intel just made with taking a mainstream processor and slapping it onto a high-end desktop platform and then calling it an entry-level processor with the idea of upgrading that processor later on to take better advantage of the platform features that are exclusive to the high-end uh, desktop space uh, platform or the enthusiast platform, but that's not really what AMD is doing here. See, what this chart doesn't tell you is that the 1800X only has 24 PCIe lanes, while the 1900X on the X399 platform will have the full 64 lanes that is also available to the 1950X and the 1920X. In addition, the 1900X actually can take full advantage of the quad-channel memory that is not available on the 1800X, which only supports dual-channel memory. 
So while all the major specifications that we typically will look at for mainstream processors like core counts, um, L3 cache, clock speeds, boost speeds, um, all those things are very nearly identical to the 1800X. The 1900X actually does bring a little bit more to the table than does the 1800X in addition to a uh, further upgrade path on down the road if you do need to eventually add more cores, more threads, whatever the case may be. But the big thing here is those 64 PCIe lanes allows enthusiasts to have a lot more expansion cards available to them than the 1800X. So whereas Intel took the 7700K and the 7600K, moved them over to their high-end enthusiast platform and took out integrated graphics, AMD is doing something kind of similar in putting an 8-core over to the enthusiast platform. However, instead of removing features, they're adding the 64 PCIe lanes over the 24, as well as the quad channel over dual channel. So even though they're very similar processors, the 19 1800X does have more to offer than the 1800X. So that's in stark contrast to the 7740X and the 7640X on the Intel side, taking a feature away from the mainstream platform as it moves that processor to the enthusiast platform. And my last sort of thought on this is adding another uh, processor to the Threadripper lineup, now three of them, uh, does sort of round out that lineup very nicely for enthusiasts. You have an 8 core now, a 12 core, and a 16 core, all on the TR4 socket. That gives you enough variation that you can sort of fit the processor for your needs. Maybe you just needed 1800X core counts, but you needed more PCIe lanes, in which case X399 looks like it is gonna be the chip for you. So good on AMD for giving us a third option, even if I still think the better value would be to go for the 12 or 16 cores because AMD is not charging you an arm and a leg to up your cores by four. Um, I should mention that the 1900X is retailing at least at launch at $550. For $800, you get a 12 core 24 thread and for the $1,000 price point, you get the full 16 core and 32 thread processor but if the 8 core is all you need and you just need those extra PCIe lanes then the 1900X may be for you and before I run on out of here it is worth pointing out that it looks like the 1950X and 1920X are launching on August 10th and it looks like the 1900X will come at the very end of August so let me know in the comments down below what you think about the Threadripper lineup are you excited about it do you plan on upgrading or are you gonna stick with the Intel enthusiast side of things with x299 instead of x399 let me know in the comments down below and of course if you like this video give it a like share subscribe all those things down below help out a lot you can follow me on instagram and on twitter at hoosier hardware they are the same tag for your convenience and as always we'll let youtube queue up a couple more videos around me from my channel for you to watch i'm shane with hoosier hardware and i'll see you guys in the next video